This is a biography on writer of War of the Worlds, H.G. Wells. He was born Hubert George Wells on September 21st, 1866 in Bromley, England to a working class family. His father was a professional cricket player as well as ran a hardware store from time to time. He, they were often worried about Wells having poor health. They often afraid that he might die at a young age as his older sister had previously. The age of self then he had an accident that left him bedridden for several months. During this time he found he found that he was a very avid reader and went through some of the books of Washington Irving and Charles Dickens. When his father's shop failed, his two older brothers were and his his whole family were struggling financially. His older brothers were apprenticed to a draper and his mother went to work at an estate for a ho as a housekeeper. When he went to his mom's work, he discovered the owner had an extensive library including Jonathan Swift and some of the important figures in the Enlightenment including Voltaire. He went to work as the draper's assistant, so he quit, much to his mother's dismay. He eventually went towards teaching and continued his own studies. He eventually won a scholarship to the Normal School of Science, where he learned about physics, chemistry, astronomy, and biology, among other subjects. He had devoted he vo devoted most of his time to becoming a writer, however. During his time in college, he published a short story about time travel called The Chronic Argonauts, which foreshadowed his future literary success. In 1895, he was an overnight literary sensation when he publicized the Time Machine, a book about an English scientist who develops a time travel machine. This book would later be adapted into a to a dual book with the book we read, The War of the Worlds, which he did in in 1898. Those were several of that was one of the several that he did in quick succession along with The Island of Dr. Moreau in 1896, Invisible Man in 1897, and of course War of the Worlds in the next year in 1898. He also wrote many essays, articles, and nonfiction books. He was a book reviewer for the Saturday Review for several years, and promoted the careers which promoted the careers of James Joyce and J Joseph Conrad. In 1901, he published a nonfiction book called Anticipations. His predictions were remarkably accurate and forecasted the rise of major cities and suburbs, economic globalization, and aspects of future military conflicts. He, remarkably, considering his support for women and women's rights, he didn't predict the w rise of the women in the workplace. Um, in 1920, he published The Outline of History, which was perhaps his best-selling work during his lifetime. It was a three-volume tome began with the prehistory and involved the world's events up through World War I. He believed another major war would follow and included his ideas for the future. He, after, while lobbying for a type of global socialism, he suggested the creation of a single government for the entire world. He also tried to advance his political ideas in the real world. He ran for parliament as a Labour Party candidate in 1922 and 1923, both ending in failure. In, in the 1930s, he branched into film. Going to Hollywood, he adapted his 1933 novel, The Shape of Things to Come, to the big screen. By 1936, his film, Things to Come, took audience on a journey from the next world war into the distant future. At about the same time, he started working on a film version of one of his other short stories, The Man Who Could Work Miracles. He got to meet several famous people during his time, and traveled widely. He went to Russia in 1920, where he met Vladimir Lenin and Leon Trotsky. A decade later, he met Franklin D. Roosevelt and Joseph Stalin. Uh, in 1891, he married his cousin Isabel 
marry Wells. The union didn't last. He soon took up with Amy Catherine Jane Robbins. They were married in 1895 after he officially divorced Isabel. He and Jane had two, two children together, sons George Philip and Frank. He also had many other affairs since he was a free thinker about sex and sexuality. One of these resulted in the birth of a daughter, Anna Jane, in 1909, and son, Anthony, Around the time of his death, Wells was remembered as an author, historian, and champion of certain social and political ideas. So many of his predictions for the future came true in the ensuing years that he is sometimes called the father of futurism, but today is best known as the father of science fiction. Wells' fantastical tales continued to fascinate audiences. Several of his works have returned to the big screen in recent years. A remake of War of the Worlds was in 2005 featuring Tom Cruise and Dakota Fanning as two of the humans fighting to survive the alien race. He died, Wells died, on August 13, 1946 in London. During his final days, however, he w it seemed darker than previously. Among his last works was the 1945's Mind at the End of Its Tether pessimistic essay in which Wells contemplated the end of humanity. His works are still seen today as some of the great science fiction novels that we know and love.